it was it was a really pivotal point in our development because we I've been working with the guild for a couple of years and we'd come together as a, as a team intensively in the in the last winter basically so it was in December I started doing the data research for the the red list we and we knew we knew that we knew that it was endangered the, the guild had first been set up 14 in 2007 actually the guild had been set up so longer than 14 years ago 2007 and it was set up then because it there was a recognition that the craft was endangered and we knew that you know so that there wasn't this pool of craftsmen out there and and basically when we started collecting the data it was a bit of a sort of shock because you know to realize that the guild itself was was maybe less than a dozen sort of working craftsmen and not all of them full time you know sort of so so and when we were trying to kind of look at well who the other cornish hedges across the county and realizing that there's you know if they're there there isn't a connection there's no connect you know so it's it's it was very very disparate and um what it did it focused it that work of putting you know drilling down and really getting the the evidence sorted and and Cornwall Council sort of came on board with this and put out a survey which was just what we needed to sort of really kind of take that forward and say well what where are the hedges across Cornwall and it just confirmed it just confirmed that we really do have an endangered craft so although we felt it we didn't really know it. And then it was a little bit shocking in terms of kind of, OK, we know sort of, well, where are the teachers? Where where are the trainers? Where, who are the where are the people that are going to pass this on? If it is so in danger now, what do we do about this? So although we had started that those conversations and started started um you know that understanding that we needed a bank of trainers and that we needed to run training courses and we needed a strategy to sort of reach across Cornwall the work that we did with to to really recognize you know for the for the uh for Cornish Hedging to be on the red list just focused it so intensively and made it really real like this is a problem and it just gave us that extra extra um sort of credibility when you're talking about people that it was that it, 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 it had the evidence to back it up so it gave us that real momentum and we found because of it every time we talk to another interested partner organization they are so on board they're just so on board with this you know sort of because everybody has a heartfelt reaction to an endangered craft you know sort of even if it's not something they want to do there's something about that grief that that might be lost and so what happens is when you tap into that story of what we have lost within our history and heritage you engage people in a really, really different way. And I think the work of the Heritage Craft Association creates that story and backdrop that supports the work really, really well, because it, 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 it basically, um, it crosses all the generations. Everybody, the young people feel that grief. Of, of that loss of craft in just the same way as the older people that do have the memories of their grandfathers that were hedging that no longer do and that no longer pass it father to son or mother to daughter whoever it is it's just so it's yeah it was really really important bit of work 